Hi everybody and welcome along to the latest edition of Get Stuck In. It's exactly what I'm going to do in the company of Ben Linford and Martin Dixon very shortly. We've got lots coming up in the show and with no football this week, there's no excuse not to join us, not just this week, but right way through to the end of the spring festivals. And on this week's show, I said we've got plenty to get stuck in. I'm going to hear from Dan Skelton about Protectorat, who's going to take on a blue tar in the Betfair Chase this Saturday. We'll also hear from Patrick Mullins about how his uh, father's aeroplanes are getting on. we also hear from Daryl Jacob. Could he spring a surprise on good old Bristol to my 11-year-old? So plenty, plenty coming up on the show. Um, welcome along. A Plutard certainty? I'd stop short of certainty at Haydock on what could be very testing ground now. Um, that's the difference I think this year, we'll get into it in a bit more detail, but last year Haydock and Cheltenham were both good to soft weren't they for the Betfair Chase and the, and the Gold Cup win. This year it's very likely, I've just been in the North West this morning, it's hammering it down with rain, the forecast quite a lot more through the week. It is going to be I think Haydock proper soft and it might even be heavy ground. So that's going to be a different test and it could be a bit more of a war of attrition. Now he's the best horse in the race by a mile, we know mm. that, but I would stop short of certainty first time out on that sort of ground at Haydock. Uh, ben, it's it's great to have him at Haydock. Great to have him last year. Great for the race. Uh, great for Haydock that he went on to win the Cheltenham Gold Cup. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, he was the standout staying chaser last season, wasn't he? Two really good performances. One in this race mm. where he absolutely hammered a Haydock specialist in Royal Pagai, and then in the Cheltenham Gold Cup where he put you know twelve lengths between himself and the field from the back of the last. And this was uh, this was superb. This day, the way he travelled and jumped. There was a touch of the Carto star about them, wasn't it? Because he's that sort of ch chase, uh, staying chaser that has speed, which is such a potent weapon, mm. um, especially at grade one level. And he just oozes class. And the, the way he ran away from them was, was brilliant. And it's, it's great to see him here at Haydock. Hopefully he can do it again. The one thing why you might not say the C word, certainty, is he got beaten at odds on at Christmas mm -hmm. um, last season. You know, what, what were the reasons, the excuses for that? Yeah, he's, I mean, he's, he's easily the best of them, as we know. Um, as I say, the, the conditions at Haydock can just, but they're going to be very different to what we're seeing there yeah. on that VT, I think. So you just got to bear that in mind. But for me, you mentioned Corto Star, Ben. I, I was look, looking back at, you look at back Gold Cups, King George's, Betfair Chases for the best stayers of, of the last 10, 15 years. For me, this is the best horse that we've had winning those top staying races since the Corto Star Denman era. Cool cards, yeah, sort of yeah um, well, look, look I'd, I'd put him ahead of them. I, Don, yeah, well. Don, Don Cass, Cossack would be the closest that I would get personally right. um, to Aplutard. But those two performances last season were out of this world, weren't they? I worked with him in racing TV last year, like we are this year again, and, and you didn't sit in the fence. You said he was the, the mm. battle of, you know, he was totally unexposed at the trip then. And... Um, it's great to have, you know, after Cotter Star and Demon, you have a couple of quiet years to have a, a proper, proper one that he looks at. Yeah, but you look at some of the, I, mean, I mentioned those races like Tornado Flyers won a King George, Frodon's won a King George, Clan yeah. Desabo, Silviniaco, Conti, they're good horses, but they're not in the league of this horse, are they? And even Bristol de Mare, with the greatest respect to him, you know, he, he couldn't get near in a Gold Cup. Not many horses can kind of do what he's managed to do over a range of distances, different tracks. Like I say, it'll be the icing on the cake if he faces heavy ground at Haydock on Saturday and he's still able to do that. Um, who's going to take him on? Well, uh, Protectorat is going to take him on. Uh, third in the Gold Cup, he was so good in a, in a many clouds last year. I know that, that's a great two and you know, it, it needs improving on. But um, uh, Dan Skelton, the horses are, are flying along. Is he a player? I think he's the most likely one to capitalise if... Aplutar's below form, certainly. When you look at that many clouds victory, even he's running the Paddy Power Gold Cup this time last year off a big weight where he ran a cracker in second, running on and shaping like he was going to get three miles. Of course, he proved it in three, and he ran well. He ran well in the Gold Cup too. Um, so I think he is the most likely. Uh, you, can, uh, you can see him here um, chasing home uh, Aplutar in third. I think his best form's probably three miles on a flat track, mm. protector at. So that's one reason why I could perhaps get closer to the Cheltenham Gold Cup winner this weekend. Yeah, I mean, you, you mentioned it earlier, Ben, about Aplutard's pace as a stayer. And that is what sets him apart, yeah. I think. The fact that he, stay, he stays well. With a turn he, of foot. With a turn of foot. But that, that's why I keep going back to the ground. If, mm -hmm. if it is, like, really deep hair dock and they go a proper gallop and it, 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 it doesn't allow him to 
sort of use that pace in the same way it becomes more of a real drawn out stamina test and a slog and that's the that could be a bit of a leveler for him we'll, we'll wait and see a protector at is trained by Dan Skelton I caught up earlier and asked him how the horse is yeah he's really good um, Harry gave him a bit of work this morning round our deep sand gallop and I was super happy with him he's been away for three away days two to our grass gallop and once away so we've done loads of work with him i'd say he's every bit as fit as he was first time last year if not fitter to be honest so i think right. it's fair to say he's probably fitter um he's going to need to be though no messing around you know we're taking on the reigning gold cup team um it's going to be hard i think it's great because you no know, in an era where there's lots of trainers sort of ducking and diving you could have went to many clouds back at entry a grade two but you're coming here you're taking him on yeah we, we were always going to come here it's, you know normal normal um, paid up condition to soft and that really suits him so they're getting a load of rain there today and tomorrow and I think there's some there Thursday as well I think Friday's a bit drier um, but I'm just hoping they're going to get as much rain as possible and the more rain the better for our horse um, we were never going to duck the challenge we've got a horse that was third in the gold cup and has won very nicely on on soft ground over three miles at Aintree we've got to go and give it a go there's no point in having you know, a horse like him when you can think you're going to get your conditions and not have a go at it. Yeah, and I get that because you look at the entry last year in the many clouds and it was a grade two, in, it was horrible conditions. He was so impressive. Yeah, he was. I think, you know, that was very unusual. I think you said to me the other day when I saw you at Aintree, that's the wettest you've ever been racing. Um, so that's highly, you know, that's highly extreme. But I think soft slash heavy, which potentially that's going to be at Haydock Saturday, that'll suit us. Um he obviously is is at home in those conditions, mm. and that only enhances his chance. But mm. make no mistakes, we're not all of a sudden going to assert the favourite at the top of the market. We're always going to start second favourite in this race, um, because Plutard is the reigning champion and it's going to be very hard to beat. You've got loads of entries the weekend, obviously Ascot and at Haydock. What else are you looking forward to? I'm really looking forward to running Get It Tonic in the three-mile handicap hurdle. She was one of the Last year, found Marie's Rock, only Marie's Rock, too good at Warwick in a listed mare's race. Well, he's very good around Ascot, but he was a bit of a monkey the other day. He's getting a pair of blinkers on, and, and that's been a definite improvement at home. Yeah, fight and talk from, from Dan Skelton. He said he's fit, he's ready to go. I think it's really commendable. He could have ducked issue. He could have went back to entry next month. And here he is. And this is his chance, I think. Yeah. First time out, it's, where, it's when you can, you, can get, you can go and beat. Um, a Plutar potentially this is his chance and they're leaving nothing nothing um, to, to mm. no excuses there at all for him it's good, it's good he's taking him on isn't it for the race it's brilliant I think if you look at the race without Protector at yeah. and it becomes you know a very different contest the one thing with my punting head on I do think if Protector at you know tries to lay up with a Plutard and tries to take him on perhaps that could kill his chance in the race and you might be looking at a, a horse with fitness like Eldorado Allen who's had a run in the Charlie Hall mm. he gave three pounds to Brave Man's game that day maybe if he comes on from that maybe he could pick up the pieces for second just thinking with a with a view to you know like looking at the forecast markets and things on Saturday that might be one thing I'm consider later in the week we haven't mentioned good old Bristol demise won the race three times yes he's 11 years young but it sounds like he's going to get his ground could he cause an upset Daryl Jacob will be on board yeah very much looking forward to Saturday um you know, he's been a wonderful horse um, for, for my career and, um, you know, his longevity, um, it, you know, it says it all. But, um, you know, I'm really looking forward to it. I worked him last week and uh, he worked really, really well. You know, he's still got the enthusiasm there. I just, you know, we've had a really, really wet morning here. I've been riding out here and we've had a really wet morning this morning. But I just ho hope Haydock is getting that, that rain as well. Mm. And that's the thing with him. If it keeps coming down and make, make it a proper attritional test. Yeah, and, and like I say, that's that's what he loves. He loves a, a flat left at hand track with, you know, very, very soft ground. And I mean last year when it, when we went there they said it was good to soft, but it was more like good to firm ground. Um, you know, and he just can't go with it. You know, he gets run off his feet there um on the quicker ground and uh, you know, that's why soft ground is he, he's always at his best. He can't, can he? Bristol Demai. No. I'd say it'd be unlikely. I mean, he's been a fantastic horse, three-time winner of the race, but I think it, it needs to rain from now until Saturday for him to have any sort of chance. And it, I just think it's, uh, 
it's time for, for someone else to dominate this race now. I hope Nigel Twiston Davis isn't listening to you too. <laughs> Great way to hurdle the weekend, so Yard uh, are in form. So that's a look at uh, the Betfair Chase. It's also a good card at Ascot on Saturday. Lon Presse, what a star he was last year. Silly Isles, Grade 1 success, and first Grade 1 for, for jockey Charlie Deutsch, trained by Venetia Williams, went on to, to Cheltenham. He was a superstar last year. Yeah, um, I'm looking forward to seeing him again. I mean, I, I think I was looking at the anti-purse market for the King George this morning. And if he takes that as you'd expect him to take it in his stride on Saturday at Ascot, he's going to shorten up for the King George. He's about a 7-1 to one shot for that at the moment. Now, Brave Man's game is a very short price. We know that Alaher's not going there. You go back to Cheltenham last year, you were tossing a coin for Brave Man's game all on Presser. Yeah, yeah. Presser's done nothing. He's, he went and won at Cheltenham. Mm -hmm. Venetia's were completely wrong at Aintree, weren't they? Not, none of them raised a gallop there. And um, he could be a huge player in the King George, and I would expect him to go and beat the likes of Hitman, Dashiell Drasher, Cool Curdy on Saturday at Ascot. Mm. Lon Press, mm. yeah, looking forward to him. He was a huge success story last season, wasn't he? I think he began off uh, in a handicap of marking the 120s and just yeah. progressed and progressed throughout the year. Um, brilliant at Aintree in, in the Brown Advisory. Perhaps there's a little bit of a cloud over that form after a high seniors run at Weatherby. I think you know that's that's probably a little bit unfair on uh, on that race. Um, and you can chuck his Aintree run, like Martin said, that the, the yard just uh, wasn't firing then, and I don't think that was his running at all. So hopefully he can pick off uh, pick up where he started last season because he was brilliant at the start of the last campaign and uh, looking forward to seeing him. Yeah, first grade one winner for uh, Charlie Deutsch I spoke to earlier. Yeah, absolutely. Um, everything we asked of him, he delivered and uh, yeah, made it all very straightforward. I was at Sandown when you won the Silly Isles on him and just seeing him beforehand in the parade ring and even afterwards in the winner's enclosure, he just looks a sort of, not the biggest robust horse, a little unassuming, real talented horse. Yes, yeah, he's, uh, like you say, I suppose he's unassuming, he's um, very relaxed about everything and takes everything in his stride, so, uh, but um, yeah, he's, he sure delivers, um, you know, when you need him and he's very, very talented. And for any jockey like yourself, no, not long on your claim, to, to, you need a superstar horse, don't you, the silly ass to go on to Cheltenham to do what he'd done at Cheltenham, how important was that to you? Oh, it's a big thing for me, um, yeah, they're, they're rare to come by, those very good horses and um yeah it made a, it's made a huge difference to my life and uh um but yeah it's just great to be great to be um involved with such good horse how's it been over the summer uh good yeah i went to france um uh i was i'm fairly quiet over here in the summer so uh went to france and um i had about 30 or well, 35 rides and six winners so um yeah had a it was a good experience and um yeah just something different really and uh yeah, really good fun. Yeah, and you're back now. The rain's coming down. Venetia will start clicking in the gear. Long presses obviously entered at Ascot Saturday. Do you sit on him much at home? Uh, not a lot. I, I scored him not long ago, and uh, he jumped very well, like he does. And um, uh, I've, ri I've ridden him once up the gallop, and uh, yeah, um, all, all seems good. So, uh, yeah. Uh, and, uh, and you'll be looking forward to just Saturday to get him going? Yes, exactly. Um, you just want... Um, Obviously, um, yeah, with with what he did last year, there's a bit of pressure. But um, yeah, you just want everything to go smoothly, and um, yeah, just really looking forward to getting him out again, really. And hopefully, develop into a proper Gold Cup contender. Yes, exactly. Um, obviously, he was against the novices last year, so this year's a you know real test, and um, yeah, you just hope that we can um, get into the races healthy and sound and. Um, and, and the rest is up to him, really. Also on the Ascot card on Saturday, will we see Constitution Hill? Will it rain enough for Nicky Henderson? I, I'm not sure if we will see him, but I want to take this chance to, to sort of, where is he? How strong is the two-mile division? Well, it's exceptionally mm. strong, isn't it? And he, he's adding it to it massively. Um, look, it was, I, I think, the two-mile performance of the season last year in the Supreme. He was seen to good effect in it in that they went a proper pace from the outset and it lined him up to, to run to a big figure um, because of the pace that they went. But in any normal year, John Bond would have been winning a Supreme Novices and he went and proved that point really at Aintree uh, on the back of the, the Supreme Novice second and Constitution Hill came home 22 lengths ahead of him. I was actually stood at the last flight of hurdles watching the Supreme with Novices me. with you and they were walking, weren't they? Mm. But he obviously was the one exception. 
but that it was a brutal race and he dealt with it unbelievably well he's a he's a massive talent and any national hunt fans going to be looking forward to seeing him when we see him again you know it's it's november i don't want but he can give the sex allowance to honeysuckle do you think i think so yeah it'll be great to see it won't it but i think he definitely can mm. sarja in there um we'll see him i think in the morgana um this weekend i know constitution you've always liked him warn you and a friend of yours had him at winning a point to point before he was sold for big money the division is just so strong it is it's really strong um and it hasn't been has it It hasn't been the last few years but honeysuckle has dominated it and uh, it's great that it looks finally at last like she's got a, a worthy rival and obviously time form already rating him 12 pounds ahead of hun- honeysuckle so uh, we'll see how the season plays out. i think it's interesting that nikki henderson is trying to start constitution out uh, constitution hill out over two and a half miles because he travelled so well over two, didn't he, last season, Matt? Yeah, he did. Do you did. think it's part of um, his education in trying to teach him to settle or something like that? I th- I, to be honest, I think it is just that this is the best option for him and he's wanting yeah. to keep his two-mile hurdlers apart because he knows that Epitant's grade one is the fighting fifth. And I, don't, I wouldn't have any doubts about him stepping up a little bit in distance because, as I mentioned before, that the Supreme Novices was such a brutal test. Mm. I mean, it tested stamina as much as anything. I, I wouldn't have any reservations about him sort of, you know, failing to cope with two and a half miles. Do you know what really surprised me with that list? Volban's not on it. Of the top two mile hurdles? Yeah. Not yeah, I think that, that's I fairly think standard for the juveniles, really. Yeah, and, and, uh, yeah. I, I, mm. But he's open to loads of improvement. He might be on it soon, Manny. I think he'll definitely be on it soon. I think it was a deep, a deep, deep triumph. You know, Pied Piper. I know he's it's small steps so far, but he's already proved that. Mm. I think he's a horse phobe on it. You know, champion hurdle. I think he's a pro, uh, no for four year olds. I know it's hard catch it. Was he the last mm. one? But yeah, yeah. but uh, I, I think was yeah, another yeah, champion yeah. Hurdle he was, he was. Yeah. But I think he. He's a horse that, could, if he stays sound, he could do a lot of damage, mm. jumping and back in the flat wall when he It's shaping up to be a series. Yeah. I mean, hopefully they all kind of go down the path and yeah. it all goes smoothly for them leading up to the spring festivals. But if 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 the likes of Constitution Hill, Honeysuckle, Vauban do what we anticipate that they might do over the next mm. four to six months, then it'll be it'll be loads to uh, some big races anyway, won't there? And mm. some exciting races and matchups between them. Mm. Okay, uh, we will be seeing Manaska this weekend. Who knows? We'll know Saturday. And over in Ireland this weekend, all eyes will be on Punchestown on Sunday. Morgana Hurdle and Willie Mullins, as ever, very well represented. I'm delighted to say that Patrick Mullins uh, joins us now. I've got to sort these out, but it looks like uh, Dad's got a, a stranglehold once again on it. Yeah, um, so look, obviously, I suppose our number one, ho- one, number one definite hope is for Sharjah, who, who's won it twice before. Mm. Um, I rode him in a schooling hurdle down in Thurles last week and he felt great, he was in great form. Um, so I was very happy with him and I'd be hoping he'd go back and get a hat-trick in the Morgana perhaps before trying to get the five-timer in the Madison hurdle at Christmas in Leprosan. And he's your ride, isn't he? Yeah, he's it's really only himself and Bidway are the only two horses I get to ride kind of year in, year out. So Rich very kindly left me on him after we teamed up in the Galway hurdle and um, Leprous on Christmas. Uh, so look, it's been a fantastic horse for me to win four hurdles at Christmas, uh, to win a Galway hurdle, been second in a champion hurdle on him. Um, and might have been on a different year, we might have might have won. Um, yeah, he's 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 uh, he's the horse that I look forward to most every year. And for some reason, you'll be different because your association with him, with your hurricane flies and, and all the aeroplanes your, your, your father trains, he sort of goes under the radar, but you're just talking about his CV, it's it's wonderful. Yeah, you must remember he um, it was five years ago. He came down to the last uh, in the novice hurdle, and there was a big shadow. And himself yeah. and Real Steel both fell. Um, and Whiskey Sour came through and win. And he was wrong about six months after that. He ran bad in Supreme Novice, ran bad in Punch Down. And it's hard when you've lost that bit of shine, um, you know. And then he, he never seems to run well the DRF. Um, but basically, in the last four years, uh, Honeysuckle is the only horse that can beat an, an unformed charger. And yeah. Um, you know, there's there's a new batch of novices coming through, but they'll have to come and beat him before they can get to um, before to get get the honeysuckle. So it's sort of his champion hurdle. Obviously, Leperstown at Christmas again, but Vauban's in there. Do you think we probably won't see him at the weekend? Yeah, Vauban. You know, he's going to be tr- a little bit tricky being a four year old. Um, you know, we're looking at maybe Espor Dallin, 
was the last five year old, but you know, a four year old going forward. Um, and he kind of sidestepped a lot of the bigger races. So we'll consider that as well. Um, uh, so we're not sure exactly what way we're going to go with him. But, you know, like I said, Espar Dallin, I think maybe ran a nice last weekend. Shalia was going to beat me for the last. And then he went to Christmas for a four year hurdle and went straight to Cheltenham. So, mm. you know, we might have to consider that kind of route as well. But there's no definite plan in Willie Land just yet for him. Yeah, William. Well, well, you just keep make sure your horse gets there uh, and uh, repeats the dose. Patrick, good to catch up. We wish you all the best. Thanks so much, Niall. Okay, Team Tracker, time for the lads to put up a couple of horses that are going to make appeal in the short, medium or long term, just horses that are going to win. Start with you, Ben. You've been really busy. You've found one for us. <laughs> Very much short term as well for me now. Young progressive horse, what is it? This is a 12-year-old rising 13. Um, but I'm going with David Dennis's Indy 5, who ran a really good race in the Jews and Handicap Chase at Cheltenham on Sunday in open company against younger horses and he was still there with two to go. He was only two lengths down at the last and he wasn't beaten far in fifth. And I think that dropping back into veteran company, this horse is going to win because David Dennis has a superb record mm. in veterans chases. He had broken, broken quest second mm. at Cheltenham the other day. He had Innis Free Lad who's won veterans chases and I think Indy Five can as well. When he drops back into that company, he's still got all his zest for the game. So short term tracker, Indy Five. Okay, keep an eye on him the next few years. Even when he's 15, <laughs> it might be worth keeping him inside. Martin, <laughs> any 12 year olds for us? None, no, no 12 year olds. No. Blenkin Sop, first of them, uh, won on the 3rd of November at Ludlow. Amateur rider's race. Alice Stevens, um, she's good, good amateur rider, but kind of got away with it on a very well handicapped horse, I thought. Got some trouble on the inside rail. He got her out of trouble. Um, he came up and got there late. It's a good family that Henry Daly knows extremely well. Fortescue, who's a 145 rated chaser. Now, Blenkinsop's gone up £4 for his win at, win at Ludlow, but he was value for loads more. I think he'll win a few times over the course of the season. Um, he's Short term, he's very much of interest. Very well handicapped horse to follow right the way through the season, I think, Blenkinsop. Uh, five Star Getaway is another one. Uh, I was at Bangor last Wednesday, popped along there to watch a few races. I saw him in the paddock, didn't think he was absolutely revved up, to be honest with you, beforehand for his seasonal comeback. Um, he's in the beach of chase in a couple of weeks' time. He's got that entry. He also won at uh, Kempton's Christmas meeting last season, so there's a possibility he could go uh, for some nice Nice races through December, but he shaped well at uh, Bangor, creeping into the race late on. And like I say, I thought he'd come on plenty for that run. And the third one is ha Harbour Lake, who ran in the Great Wood yeah, on Saturday, Sunday. Um, dropping back to two miles in a top end handicap, he was found out for pace. Really, got quite badly outpaced from the home turn, but he was staying on well late on I think back up to two and a half could see him winning something like the Lanzarotti maybe Kempton of every time uh, Jan early January, January isn't yeah. it yeah. Um, but Harbour Lake I think for a two and a half mile that sort of distance mm. top handicap hurdle I think is going to be one to be interested in real Trevor Hemmings horse isn't he yeah. you know, the, the way he He'll improve back up and trip, and I think for a fence in due course. Yeah, they took a chance really for a nice prize on yeah. on Sunday in the Great Wood, and it, he ran really well. He finished third, and they mm. picked up a nice bit of prize money for it. But he clearly isn't a two mile horse yeah. for those races. Okay, there's a few horses for the team tracker. And the winner is this weekend. Just give give us a horse that will win. I'll start with you, Ben. I'm going with Peking Rose Nile in the Yuck. yeah the Stayers Handicap Hurdle, the old Fixed Brush, yeah. 225. Um, I do like this horse for Fergal O'Brien. I've always liked him. He was 50 to 1 second in the Aintree Bumper, splitting Napper's Hill and Stage Star a few years ago. And um, have been progressive since then, really, in Novice Hurdles last season. And I think since returning this season from wind surgery, he looks like he started off a low handicap mark off 129. Won at Aintree last time out, a handicap hurdle that... Yeah has had a good bearing on this race in the past, Paisley Park won it and came on to win at Haydock this race and same with Stony Mountain of Henry Daly's won at Aintree and at Haydock this race as well and I think Peking Rose could well do the same because I think he's a horse that could find more improvement stepping up in trip to three miles, he's related to quite a few stayers and uh, Paddy Brennan nominated this race straight after mm. Aintree and he's uh, going to get in the bottom of the way, it's around 14 to 1 and I do think he could be a short and going into the weekend so... Fergal O'Brien's peaking rose for me. 
Okay, same race, you're going to take same a moment. Same race, yeah. Um, again, just looking at something at a price that I think will run and will shorten up. Uh, Brinkley is the horse that I like for this. Now, David Pipes won it a couple of times this race. Uh, he won it with Gevry Chambertin, yeah. and he won it a couple of years ago with N Main Fact as well. Main Fact is actually entered um, for Saturday's race. Just had a quick word with David this morning. He said he would need quite a lot of rain to fall at Haydock, but it looks like that's forecast. Mm. Uh, Brinkley is an intended runner there on Saturday at Haydock. Um, he's a well-handicapped horse, Brinkley. He's, uh, he's down to 138 over hurdles. He won a Potemps qualifier a couple of seasons ago off 140. He's a proper stayer. He loves soft ground, which I think he's going to get. And the Pipe Yard just generally this season, 42 winners already for yeah. David Pipe this, this season. Last season in the whole of the year, he only had 47 winners. So right. it just shows you that he's operating at a much higher strike yeah. rate, many more winners, stable just generally in better form, better health, I think, than they were last season. And if you scratch off La Brinkley's campaign last year where he went chasing, didn't quite happen for him, you know, and then he ended up running respectably on his final start over hurdles in February. If we go back to the season before, he's got a huge chance on the form that he was showing, and I think conditions will be perfect for him. OK, albeit in the same race, two horses there that uh, will hopefully shorten and will hopefully go very, very close to winning that valuable prize. That's Brinkley uh, for Martin Dixon and Peking Rose for Ben Linford in the 2.25 at Haydock on Saturday. What else are we looking forward to at the weekend? It's just a, it's a good card, isn't it? You know it? what, I, I love this. You look at, I, I, the entries are down num numerically, but mm. you look at what we've got, uh, potentially anyway, Supreme Novice winner and Arkle winner, Edward Stone's going to be coming out again at, at Ascot on, on Saturday. I think these Funambol Sevilo, who was runner-up yeah. in the champion chase, we could see him potentially at Ascot as well. Gold Cup winner, Gold Cup third, taking each other on in the Betfair chase. There's loads of quality in Britain, isn't there, on Saturday for all that the, the numbers are down in terms of you know what we could see some smaller fields. We're seeing some really good horses. I think the Betfair chase, it's always a small field anyway. And for me, there's with the Gold Cup winner and the Gold Cup third and then Frode on Bristol de Mayer, previous winner of the race, there's a load of depth there. And that card at Haydock year in, year out is really yeah. good. There's a good atmosphere there. It gets a big crowd, knowledgeable crowd as well. And um, look forward to it. I agree. Absolutely, yeah, loads of highlights to pick from. I guess away from the horses we've already mentioned, I'm really looking forward to seeing Hitman and what he can do second time out because he was obviously second in the old Rowan chase at Aintree last time. That form's working out well, isn't it? Gala obviously mm -hmm. winning at Cheltenham at the weekend. He's got a couple of options, Hitman. He could take on Long Press at Ascot or he could run at Haydock, but wherever he goes, I'm looking forward to seeing him because I do think he's one of those Paul Nichols projects that he's going to bloom at some point this season. Mm. And don't forget, um, there's a small meeting in Ireland the weekend, Punchestown, the Morgana Hurdle, looking forward to that. And there's a certain trainer called Willie Mullins, he's got a few fancy runners over the next few weeks on Sport and Life on Friday. You can catch up with his latest thoughts. That's us done and dusted. Ben, Martin and myself, we'll see you soon.